Hello everybody, welcome back. I've made a few adjustments to the bounder that have made it ride noticeably smoother. I don't know why it's taken me this long to do this. Come on, Bella. We're gonna, we're gonna get to that in a second here. I had to take Bella out for just a moment. Uh, I left her good 26, whoops. I left her good uh, German made 26 foot leash in the Ford Focus and I got this little backup 15 foot leash this Walmart leash <laughs> so anyway but so the bounder for right now it has to do with the airbags and the and the tire pressure and it's not gonna stop there I, I've ordered some other uh, suspension parts that we're, while, while we're doing it I'm just gonna go with it and we're gonna give it a good suspension basically an overall suspension tune-up so um, parts are ordered and they won't be in till uh, they won't be in for a few days come on come on come on come on come on come on so the parts won't be in for a few days and uh so we're out and about a little bit I'll, I'll say what's going on here right now with it is i've made an initial adjustment of uh backing off the tire pressure i have i've been running too too much tire pressure and i've corrected an issue with the rear airbags and i'm just going to replace the front airbags they're basically disintegrated non-existent we're we have to go where it's quieter we're just off of exit 78 on Interstate 80 in Brookville, Pennsylvania. We actually got here last night, dark and rainy, and stayed here at the Country Pride uh, TA Travel Center. There's a restaurant there, and uh, on the lower part, there's a laundromat. I haven't done laundry. I haven't done laundry since we left Florida. That's been I don't know three weeks. Get closer to four weeks. Part of the reason for coming up here is right across the street here's a flying J and they have certified cat scales. I want to weigh the bounder because I'm going to reestablish the correct tire pressure, uh, what it's supposed to be. The door tag, well, on most vehicles that have a door, there's a door tag. When you open it up, there's a tag right on the inside that says what tires belong or the what the tires belong on it are, you know, the proper size, the proper pressure, all that. The bounder don't have a door here so that plate is on the inside wall here on the inside it has all that information on it might as well stop here for a second we'll get back to the tire thing okay this will be difficult to see um, i've already taken the old airbag out of that spring over on that side which you can't see from here so we'll look over on this side okay this big cool spring now now it has what's left of an airbag inside of it and uh, 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 well maybe you know maybe we're not gonna be able to see it on the camera it's mostly gone it's just disintegrated and cracked there's some red hang on here we'll do it this way okay let's see if i can push push it up let's see if you can push it up a little bit you see that red stuff in there it's all you know you can hear it cracking because i'm messing with it down here um, but that's all that's left of the old airbag now I thought when I bought this I didn't think the airbags were you know factory installed because the way these were the way these were hooked up they have these lines that were just zip tied you know it's kind of a generic installation really these airlines went to the bottom of the bag here it just doesn't seem like something um, Chevrolet or Fleetwood would do is you know the airline hooked up there they just zip tied them to this big sway bar and then fished them down through this hole in the frame and it just it's just dangling here a piece of tape and a wire and out here's another zip tie and then they are they did drill a whole amount of valve out here 
So it just seemed like something that, you know, maybe the, the previous owner uh, maybe, you know, tried installing an upgrade because there are suspension modifications out there for just about any vehicle. So I thought these were just added on um, that they really weren't necessary or, or part of the original setup. So I'm just going to twist that back around there for now. But I was wrong, and we'll get to that. The rear airbags was actually a simple fix. This, and this was, um, this was probably, this was even more weird, This what happened here. Um, it didn't cost me anything, and, and they're working properly. Okay, these airbags are a little bit different. They're a different type. But they, um, right now, they have about 80 pounds of air in them. <laughs> now, I could never figure out, for the longest time, it was all I could do to just get um, 20 pounds in them. It just, I don't know what was wrong, whether the valve was wrong, um, was stuck or jammed or clogged, and the airline runs off the top right there, or maybe well, the line up there was smashed. I just, uh, I don't know. I thought maybe these could have been added on too, uh, because you know the front ones appeared to be to me. So I just didn't think airbags were just necessary. Well, so what happened? What happened here? This is the weird part. This line looks a little bit better mounted. Hang on. Okay, so here's the weird part. This airline looks a, a little better mounted. At least goes through this kind of a, a loop here, and it goes through this channel here, and out here to the valve. You unscrew that, and put the air in it. Well, I tried and it tried and tried to put air in there, and it's just it seems like it takes a little bit. But like I said, I could only ever get like about 20 pounds in there, and that's the minimum pressure those are going to be run at. Well, here's what I found out. Craziest thing. I thought once I started, you know, addressing this whole um, situation, I took this cover off, and I found out that th this was. See, right now I have it. I have it kind of looped around <laughs> to take up the. That's the excess slack, and these are cut a little bit too long. Well, the way this was was this was all. This actually. Oops, where is it? This actually ran straight and came straight across here. And instead of the excess being looped like I have it up there now, it came in, and because it was too long, they folded it over, and it came back, and they folded it over again, and it came out, and they put the cover on it. <laughs> well, that put two kinks in it. <laughs> so no wonder, you know, when the lines kink, no wonder I couldn't get air into it. I popped those off and seen that, and I thought, you got to be kidding me. It Could it be that? Could that be all that it is? Um, because even with that 20 pounds, I could hit the valve and you hear, tss, 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 you know, air noise, like they're, they're holding air, just not much of it. Anyway, I straighten these lines out, straighten the kinks out a little bit, and all of a sudden, like magic, man, they just, they aired right up. They pop that back on. So these back ones are supposed to operate between a, mi a minimum of 20 pounds and a maximum of 90 pounds so I filled them up to 90 pounds uh, and then I decided to back it off just a little bit I backed it off that back down to 80 pounds I have to set I don't know if it was a full day maybe it was two days and I came back and checked it and they were still at 80 pounds and you know while I was filling you could always hear when there's an air leak and you know I didn't hear any hissing anything it went up to 90 sat there for you know I come back a little bit later and said that ah, maybe it's 80 is good enough and um, you know that whole pro during that whole time, I didn't hear any hissing whatsoever. And yeah, they still um, they still held 80 pounds after sitting for a while. So I think I think they're going to be good. So I have those front bags ordered, and surprisingly, I don't think there's any tools required. Pretty much, I don't think I have to tear the suspension all apart to get them up in there. There's, I think there's a trick. There might be a trick to it. It might not be too bad of a job. So, uh, and, and those bags were only, you know, about $80 for the set. So it comes down to it for like 80 bucks and, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of work. The uh, bounder will be back 
on all, all four airbags again. Now this whole tire pressure thing. You know, I, you know, back in the day, I've had a lot of vehicles over the years. A lot of, you know, I've had my share. And, you know, back in the day, the older style tires, uh, you know, truck, car, van, pretty much across the board, tires were a maximum pressure of 32 pounds of air. And, and the door tags would say run, well, it might say, you know, difference front and rear, maybe 30 and 32, but pretty much right at max. So, you know, over the years, I've just always been at that mindset that tires should be, you know, right at their very near the max. Now, the thing with the Bounder is it's a commercial vehicle, and so it's, it's a different category. It's an industrial or commercial application. It's not a car, van, or truck with the old 32-pound tires, okay? Uh, these commercial tires, you know, back in the day, 30, it's the 1990, 30 years ago, these, these tires, which is uh, the size is 8R195, is the tire size. It's a commercial truck tire. They have uh, a maximum of 65 pounds. Now those were the old, those were the old school tires. That was that's 30 year old tire technology. Uh, that was 1990. Yeah, that's when the Bounder was made. Uh, still, the original spare was still in it. Said right on it, maximum uh, psi, 65 pounds. The door tag said to have 60 pounds in the front, 65 in the back. Um, but new tires. Some more tire technology changed because the very same size tire, the 8R 19.5s, you know, the old ones took 65 max. The new 8R 19.5s take 110 pounds max. So in my mind, I'm thinking these tires were designed to run harder, you know. But so I'm thinking that that door plate is probably no longer accurate. That was with different older tires. You know, these are new and improved tires, different tire technology. They, they're probably not designed to run at 60 and 65, probably, probably not designed to run that low. So, so yeah, these have a maximum pound, uh, yeah, of 110 PSI. Now, I've seen in RV forums before where uh, people have said, and I've just kind of, you know, it brushed it off because, you know, thinking I should just run them near maximum. I figured, you know, instead of 110, I'll back it off maybe to 100. 100, 105, and that's, that's plenty. Well, that's harder than they're supposed to be. Uh, but 60 and 65 is too soft. So I went to the Sumo Tumo website, and there is a, they do have a chart on what their tires should be ran at according to how much weight is on them. So just initially, I've initially backed them all off to 80 pounds. Uh, because I know from that door, that door tag also tells me that the, uh, I think the GVRW, the gross vehicle weight rating or whatever, the front axle is like 5,000 pounds, the back axle is 10,000 pounds, so, somewhere right there. Um, and then I looked at the, the chart online and it's saying something like, I think, roughly 70 pounds and 75 in the back. So, yeah, that's much less than the max, but it is substantially greater than the old information, which says 60 and 65. It's now 70 and 75 with these new and improved modern tires. So, and I can tell you right now, just backing them off to 80 pounds, I thought that's my initial adjustment because I, I knew I could go down to at least that. Even if the bounder weighs a little bit heavy or right at heavy, I'm, I'm still gonna have to let a little bit more out. So that's the purpose of, I wanna weigh the bounder as I have it set up and how I travel with it. You know, I, I generally fill the water tank up, 100, 100 gallons of water, uh, how I have it arranged where you know, tools weigh so much and this and that and you know, how I, have, how I have it set up for me, how I travel. I have a motorcycle on the back. Um, so I want to weigh it the way I have it set up and by those weights look on the chart for my final numbers and see if I truly or maybe it's 75 and 75 or 75 and 80 or it, maybe it is 70 and 75 I don't know but I'm gonna get it weighed and get those final numbers dialed in uh, and then I'll probably have to get back to get some what the final adjustment what what kind of is right for the airbags once I get those in installed and like I say, I got some other suspension parts coming, but we'll get to that when 
that stuff gets in and, and we get that far. Whew, that's, that's a mouthful, all that stuff. So part of this of getting the, the bounder to the weight that it normally is, uh, for the most part, as I travel, uh, you know, when I'm ready to travel, I also have the, the waste tanks emptied, the fresh water full, uh, and, and fill the gas tank up. So, yeah, that's it. The tanks that are supposed to be full are full. The tanks that are supposed to be empty are emptied. That's a, that's a big weight difference. Liquids are heavy. So, uh, I'm going to take care of that stuff, dump the tanks, fill the fresh water, get gas, then we'll go over to the scales, and that would be the, the best working weight and those would be the best numbers to work with I think the one determining the, um, the the final numbers for the power pressure okay the hundred gallon tank is almost full the other consideration is I have the little motorcycle on today and it weighs about a hundred pounds less than the other motorcycle so this is I have to take that into account with my numbers to add a hundred pounds for the heavier bike when I have it on I'll get it figured out. The only thing left to do is fill up the gas tank. We're ready to weigh. That's it. Took 30.7 gallons of fuel. I might find out Betty needs to go on a diet. <laughs> I don't know yet. Okay, pull on the scales here. up here to this little station. Okay, I think there are four platforms on this scale. You, know, you can see a little yellow dividing line on there. One axle per, um, per section. So the front ones are on the first section, and the back ones are on the second, second section. Yeah, it says one set of axles per platform. Driver responsible for having the truck directly on scales. All right, call weight master, press a button, wait for a response, visit fuel desk for weight ticket. Okay. okay. Is this the first way or a reway? Um, just the first way, just weighing once on an RV. Okay, so, okay, I'm just going to put one as, in as your number. Okay. Thank you, I have the wait, go forward and come in when you're ready. Thank you. Okay, let's swing this thing around. The bounder has been weighed. We gotta go in and pay and get our our uh, scale ticket. That's not too bad. Certified scales. I forget what the max is. I'd have to look at that tag again. It's either 15,000 or 16,000 pounds max that the bounders are uh, rated for. I have a feeling we're right at the max. Really close. Hopefully not over. At least in the back. We'll see what happens. Well, that's about what I expected. It's a little light in the front and actually a little heavy in the back. I could shuffle some things around a little bit. and Maybe I will. It's borderline. Maybe if I wouldn't have overfilled the water tank until it was dripping all over the place. It, it's, we're right there. I really can't put anything else in the bounder. Anyway, based on that, yeah, and for reasons of, I plead the fifth, so as not to incriminate myself. Well, I'm not going to say the actual numbers, but like I said, it's a little little light in the front, a little heavy in the back. If I shuffled some things around, um, we, I think we'd be all right. And I used a, a couple gallons of water. We're, we're that close. <laughs> oh boy. So it's close enough that I'm just going to use the numbers on that door tag because I probably will reshuffle that and adjust that. Um, it, it's not by much. so. 
I'll just um, do a little rearranging and call it good. I mean, I'm just going to use the numbers off of the door tag or the wall tag again in this case and figure my tire pressure. And I'm like I said, I'm used to running pretty firm tires, and I'll probably actually round it up. There's quite a range there. I'll probably round it up to the next uh, what it's supposed to be uh, plus five pounds. So if it calls for 70 and 75. I'll probably do 75 and 80. I'd round them each up by five pounds and it'll be all right. It'll still be well under max, the max 110 pounds and it'll still be a much better ride than it used to be. I forgot that actually the airbags are part of the original setup. Whether um, Chevrolet did it from the factory or once Fleetwood got it in, I think Fleetwood did those because that does not look like, those front bags, that's not a Chevrolet, you know, a, a manufacturer of a commercial chassis wouldn't have zip tied plastic lines like they did. That had to have been done by that, and the, and the back ones folded over like that. If anything, if Chevrolet would have done that, that would have been done probably with hard lines, kind of like to do with um, you know brake lines and fuel lines, or you know for the most part are metal rigid lines, more permanently mounted. These had to have been added on by. Uh, Fleetwood. And the reason I, how I come to that determination that this was sold with those on it, is I didn't notice this at first, but up on the up on, up on the visor, but you know when I put this visor down, if it's sunny, you know I pull it forward and pull it down, and it's all you know adjusted as needed. Well, I never noticed on the opposite side. It took me a while to notice this. There is a, a notification that this came with airbags. And it says the front uh, coil, the yeah, the air cylinders in the front located within the coil springs filmed the 50 pounds maximum 40 psi minimum. So, those fronts I need to get those in and maintain them between 40 and 50 pounds. And then I'll just look at the back, it goes on to say more about the back ones as well 20 minimum, 90 maximum. So what I'll do is I'll get the front ones adjusted 40 to 50 and then I'll set the back ones so I guess uh, they look uh, the RV looks kind of level I guess right Bella he's like can we get where we're going so I can go out and run around so as far as the suspension and tires go that's probably it for now and until I get the bag until the bags come in and, and we'll do that and then I'll, I have other suspension parts uh, coming as well uh, to further uh, give it a suspension tune-up freshen the suspension all up so it rides like it should and it sits like it should so it'll have its original posture so we'll be getting all that here uh, in some upcoming videos when we get back down the garage and our parts are in I, I think that might be it for this video um, if you haven't subscribed already uh, subscribe so, so you get notifications about these upcoming videos and our upcoming travels I think that yeah that's it as always like comment share and subscribe and there are oh and I before I forget we're running starting to get low on the um, the Bella stickers the days RV life stickers with Bella on there and we might, it might be the last of the original design stickers of, of, we've kind of changed it, had a little bit of help with it, updated it a little bit, made some minor changes to it. it you know, it'll be basically the same, maybe the new and improved slightly, but, but the originals, the original run of the stickers is coming, is, is getting low. So if you want one of the original stickers, um, what's left of them, the, uh, the instructions are in the comment, the, video description below the video here so click on that get your get the last of the originals today that's it yeah like comment share subscribe i'll see you next time